Hi, my name is Perlene and I'm 25 years old and I'm a teacher. As an educator, in all aspects, I see myself as an active, inclusive, and a lifelong learner. Uh, my philosophy of education is pretty complex. Um, I tend to use pedagogies that promote active interaction with the curriculum, um, but also create a passionate and purposeful learning environment. Now, I strongly believe that learning should be reciprocal, where we learn from each other in a safe space that's socially and culturally and academically inclusive. Now, I believe inclusivity is not limited to just cultural and social differences, but is also the process of recognition, reflection, and acceptance, which is why I was so excited to do this project. In this space, we get to share our experiences as Black Canadians, share our history, our past, our present, so that others can learn and do better in the future. So here's my story. I was born and raised in Bronx, New York, and I lived there with my mom and my sister. Unfortunately, my mom got really sick, and so I had to move to Canada and live with some family here. Now, that in itself was a huge culture shock because I was one out of maybe the eight or nine black students in my school. And so at a young age, I felt the pressure to be a representative of my race, but also felt as an outcast. I got made fun of with my hair, how I spoke, what I looked like. And when it came to Black History Month, I remember learning about Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks, Harriet Tubman, all Black historic American icons. But I did not learn about Portia White or Rosemary Brown or Lincoln Alexander, Canadians who made an impact on our Black history. As a teacher, I find it necessary to address the issues of racism, false assumptions, and how she just treat one another with care and respect in efforts to eliminate these socially constructed stereotypes that are being exposed to my students and the younger generation. And unfortunately, most of the time, these assumptions aren't coming from them, but from what they learn outside of my classroom walls. And you know what? To have teaching as a career is like having a rewarding challenge every day. Not only to challenge your students with new content and opening up the space for critical thinking, but to also challenge yourself as an individual to take on the job as educating the future leaders of the world. For today's moment, I'll be talking to you about Africville. Africville was an African-Canadian village founded in the mid-18th century in the north end of Halifax. The Black presence in this land dates way back to 1848, and research shows that the community continued to exist 150 years after that. Freed slaves, Jamaican Maroons, and Black refugees from the War of 1812 all made up this close-knit community, where there are stores, schools, a post office, a Baptist church. Essentially, Black prosperity existed here. However, the local government systematically destroyed this thriving, independent neighborhood. Although taxes were collected in Africville, the government of Halifax refused to provide simple services such as paved roads, garbage collection, sewers, and even running water. The government further worsened the community's circumstances by building undesirable developments around the area, like an, a hospital filled with infectious diseases, a prison, and a human waste dump. These horrible measures were left in place until the neighborhood was demolished in 1964. Now, despite the resilience of the locals and their unwillingness to displace from the land, their land that they owned, the government's plan worked and they drove the residents out of the area. Fast forwarding 40 years, since the last home in Africville was demolished, open wounds are still healing. The mayor of Halifax decided to deliver an apology in 2010 and promised to deliver a replica church and interpretive center. However, former residents of Africville did not accept this apology. It was seen as a token gesture because none of the residents that were displaced were ever compensated for their pain and anguish. It's important that we know our history as it represents our oppression faced by Black Canadians and challenges the narrative of there's no racism in Canada. 
which isn't true. It is now time for us to uncover our Black Canadian history. So here's my question to you. As a community of learners, what are we gonna do to educate our students about our Black Canadian experiences from the past and the present? What steps are we gonna take to make sure that our future is better informed than we were? So we can finally learn from the past and to create a better future that is positive, restorative, and has a justified change for the global community. For more information, click on the links below.